Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the unusual planets known as Super Puffs. This is one of such unusual planets discovered not so long ago known as Kepler 51c. But of all of the planets we've discovered, all 15 of them really create more questions than answers. But let's discover what scientists recently found about them and welcome to Other Math. So what exactly is a super puff? Well, as the title or I guess the name suggests, these planets are exceptionally inflated. If you were to compare it to Earth for example, which we can do right here by using the Universe Sandbox, if we were to compare the Kepler-51 uh, planets to our planet Earth, you would get something that's about 55 times as inflated. Let me demonstrate. Here's Earth, the real Earth, compared to a super puff version of Earth. Now this is about 55 times less dense than our own planet, but it doesn't really look correct because this is not exactly what we think they look like. And some of the recent discoveries, specifically this paper here that you can find in the description below, analyzed the super puffs of Kepler-51 by using NASA's Hubble telescope and discovered some really strange and unusual properties that we didn't really expect to find. Now, first of all, when looking at these super puffs, the scientists behind this paper, or technically all of the scientists, were expecting to find um, quite a lot of water in the atmosphere of these planets. But when the scientists used the observations of the atmosphere of the planet passing in front of the stars so they can actually see the composition of this planet, they were quite surprised to find out that not only was there no water, but it was actually very difficult to see what's even in the atmosphere or even nearby this planet. As a matter of fact, they refer to this observation as a very hazy environment. And this hazy environment suggested to the scientists that the planet doesn't seem to have water. Instead, it seems to have a lot of methane very similar to another object here in the solar system. The object that orbits Saturn known as Titan. This moon of Titan is very well known to us by now because we even landed on it. And it's known for its haze, very hazy, very thick, and also very high atmosphere. In other words, this object is, in a sense, a kind of a puffy moon. And so the scientists behind this paper believe that because of all of this methane here, something very similar is happening around the super puffs in the Kepler-51 system and essentially all of the other super puffs. Now, if we were to compare these planets to the ones in our solar system, this is what you would see. These objects in terms of size are actually really, really big. They even are in the same sense very similar to objects like Jupiter and Saturn, but their mass is very low. As a matter of fact, all of these planets have a mass that's only a little bit uh, larger than the mass of planet Earth. So in that sense, it's sort of as if a Jupiter-like planet had mass of about 100 times less than it really does. So Jupiter here has a mass of about 318 masses of Earth, but this planet only has a mass of 5.7 masses of Earth, so dramatically lower, and this of course creates a very unusual and very strange property that we've never really seen before. And so currently we can't really explain how exactly these planets form, but we think that it has something to do with both methane and hydrogen helium atmosphere that sort of balloons out and creates these incredibly thick but also very large in size planets that can only exist in certain star systems. Because we actually haven't found that many, we've only discovered 15 so far, and we don't think these are very common objects. And interestingly, a lot of the media sources even compare these planets to cotton candy. And I was wondering, are these planets really the same density as cotton candy? One of my most favorite snacks when I used to be younger. Well, I was trying to look up the value for a typical cotton candy density and it seems to be 0.68 grams per centimeter cube. Which also seems to be at least 10 times more than these planets. So, in that sense, these planets are even less dense than cotton candy. I'm sure someone out there knows a little bit more about the actual densities. So if you do know what the true density of cotton candy is, please post it in the comments below. But anyway, let's get back to these planets and what else was discovered here. Well, first of all, it's actually really hard for us to see much else here because these planets are really far away. The distance is about 2600 light years away from planet Earth. So these are really some of the most distant planets discovered by Kepler. But at the same time, there currently is really no explanation for why specifically these planets are so puffed up and why their atmosphere is so bloated. 
but the best explanation so far does involve a little bit of what we see from um, objects like Titan and what Sun does to things like methane. For example, from learning things about Titan, we know that there are certain conditions where a sun, if it strikes methane, can actually create quite a lot of haze and a lot of conditions that are similar to what we've discovered around these planets. For example, when the New Horizons probe passed by Pluto, it was able to see unusual haze formed by methane that was creating these atmospheric effects around Pluto that's really far away from the sun. So even at these distances, hazy effects seem to be already apparent. So what if you were to move this object much, much closer to the sun? Kind of like in the system of Kepler-51, where the planets are much closer to the parent star, and so they get bombarded by a lot of really strong radiation, and a lot of various interactions um, of methane in the atmosphere of these planets is essentially multiplied dramatically due to the distances involved. Well, the scientists behind this paper believe that by having the interaction with ultraviolet radiation, this is how the methane in these planets becomes so dramatically expanded. Or essentially, this is exactly how various super puffs are formed. So by having just the right amount of methane and possibly a few other molecules that we're not entirely sure about, and by then introducing relatively strong solar effects or mostly UV light coming from the star itself, this is probably how all of these planets get formed, how they get expanded, and how then eventually they transform into something a little bit different. Now this is something that James Webb Telescope uh, will definitely help us finally answer once and for all, but even now the scientists behind this paper believe that what's causing these planets to puff up is at the same time causing them to lose a tremendous amount of matter. As a matter of fact, they are probably losing so much that there's a huge tail formed behind them, similar to what you see in the simulation, and in approximately 1 billion years from now, the scientists believe that the size of these planets will shrink from Jupiter size, roughly to about size of Neptune and Uranus. In other words, this will probably become something similar to this right here, or maybe even smaller. And the other explanation that the scientists give for the existence of these planets is because, well, essentially, Kepler-51 system and similar systems are very, very young. They're only about half a billion years old, and this is pretty young considering the fact that our solar system is about 10 times older. And so these planets exist here simply because the system hasn't really evolved that much yet. However, with time, and more specifically after about a billion years, all of these planets might actually evolve and look a lot similar to what we have here in the solar system. So the scientists believe that it's just a matter of time. But this of course raises a question. And this question is about our own solar system. Were Neptune, Uranus, or possibly even some other planets so dramatically different in the past as well? Were they also some sorts of puffy planets or unusual inflated planets in the past and then shrunk? Or did similar planets exist in our own solar system eventually turning different? For example, what if it's what Mercury used to be like? What if it was some sort of a gas-like uh, object that lost all of its atmosphere over time? Now, there's currently no um, actual proof or any suggestion that this happened, but until we actually go to Mercury, land there, and study some of the actual rock there, and most importantly, analyze the age of the rock, we're not going to be absolutely certain. Now, I'm sure sometime in the future we'll be able to finally answer all of the questions in regards to the formation of various star systems and, of course, the formation of our own solar system. But for now, questions like this actually do make me wonder what else out there exists that we still haven't discovered. More specifically, what other unusual planets are out there that are just so completely different from anything here in the solar system? And of course, once we discover those unusual objects, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video that discusses all of these mysteries in a little bit more detail. For now, that's really it. Check out the paper in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Possibly, support this channel with Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.